Hello, hello. All right, we are going to look at client setup today. Let me turn the Remarkable on. Um, how do you set up your device for when you have clients? Um, this question comes up probably once a week, um, somewhere around there. It comes up quite regularly in the Facebook group. So I thought it'd be great just to create a few visuals to explain um, how I go about setting up mine and uh, some suggestions for how you could go about setting up yours in a methodical way and then you can tweak um, and go from there. So client setup, let's have a look. <clears throat> this is the goal is to go through this with you. Um, folder structure, the filing system and then getting to the clients, how you would then uh, create each individual notebook and PDF and PNG files within that. So that's where we're headed. Here is my beautiful visual of a filing cabinet. No, I'm not I'm not an artist. <laughs> well, I'm, I am a creative, but I did my best filing cabinet here for you. It's my best filing cabinet. Um, and I just wanna put this picture in your mind because when you are looking at setting up your folders and your filing system and your workflow for the first time, it can be, um, daunting if you're not familiar with this device and even if you're a newbie in the digital space like we have a lot of newbies even in the digital space so that's why all questions are welcome we don't want to take for granted knowledge okay we want to share the knowledge that we have so pretend you're remarkable this device is your filing cabinet okay so this is the hardware here this is the hardware and inside there's obviously some software and then what we're going to talk about is your main folder structure which are your top level folders, which I will give you an example of in a minute. These are the big areas that are important to you. So if I do, uh, if I close this document, this is my, this is my filing cabinet and these are my drawers, home, Etsy, YouTube and clients. Now, this is just, I did this scenario for you guys. All right, so your filing cabinet is this. These are your top level folders. And then you're really just going to layer folders within folders within folders, and then we'll get to the files. So nothing different to how you have your computer set up, which is a good idea for you to do that. Now, I've done my best draw coming out. <laughs> oh, yes. Um, again, same top level folders. And then what we're talking about here is how do I set up my client's folder so that it can function well? And I'm going to use real estate industry as my example here. All right. And as you can see, if I cut to the chase, I, I'm suggesting to you, you guys do whatever you want, but I'm suggesting you go with folders A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And again, let's close this document out. I don't know why, but the... I'm, yeah, I think I do know why. The, I'm used to the pressure of my right hand. If we go into clients, I've set something up for you already. You can see I've created folders A through to Z. And I always have a folder for my master templates. So that's what I would do. The reason they're white is because there's nothing in them. Okay, I really just, this is a dummy folder for you guys just to see how I would set up for clients. This would be coaching clients. You know, this, uh, like... I've helped lawyers set up, travel agents, um, even some nurses who keep information, health coaches, things like that. So any client situation this this works for. A to Z, now in a real estate situation, I would use A to Z of properties. I would actually use this for the properties that I would have listed. But yeah, I don't know if it makes sense to do it via, uh, through people. I think your property is your linchpin. And then underneath your property, you may have people interested. You may have some sales that have gone through, sales that haven't gone through. You may resell properties. So, yeah, I, I, that's how I would do it. Okay, going back there and clicking back into our document. So that's the draw that I would make clients one of my top level folders. And then, as you can see, I've sort of given an example here. I would go A, B, C, D, and then just say we had nine, 29 Barley Road was a property address. <laughs> coming up with my best thing here. Um, within that folder, these are obviously all folders, right? In, in a filing cabinet, there's suspension files, but they're folders. And then within a suspension file, you have all your papers, which are your notebooks inside of your Remarkable. 
Um, and then within that folder for B or under that property here, um, let's change it to something that we could highlight with. Um, you would have within that property, I would have, I'd have a logbook for anyone that's interested in it. I would have a notes book, empty notebook, just, just for notes. And then there's the documentation that comes with that property, whatever that looks like. There could be several or there could be just one. So in a real estate scenario, that's 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 the nuts and bolts of it. I'm going over just to explain to you a few other things. For those that are not so visual, I've written it out as well. The filing cabinets, you're remarkable. The drawers, each drawer is like a top level folder area of your life. Um, Inside the suspension files, you have all your second level, third level, fourth level folders or files. And the papers inside them all are what is equivalent to the notebooks inside of here, which are really PNG files, okay, or PDF files. So that's the same information, just in a different analogy. Um, I really just put this here just to say to you, you, you just need to decide. If this is your remarkable you just work out what are your top areas, okay? And then work out within that area, what other areas are there? So that's that's basically same information, just shared a different way. And again, this is again, I've already, I've already we've talked about this, um, but let's just go over it here. You've got clients, you give them a folder each. So if you did people, if it wasn't a real estate example and you were coaching, you would have perhaps, and you'd have to decide on your naming conventions, but you would have a file for every person. Well, I would start with a folder for all the letters of the alphabet. And then within each folder, I would actually go with the people and then another folder for each person. And then within each folder for each person, that's when you start doing um, documents and you know, we can talk about documents another time. So that's, yeah. My example, like just an example for me, um, I had, I have home, I have YouTube, I have Etsy. They are both Etsy and YouTube are work. Under those, I have folders for all of these. My products folder is huge because it has a lot of documents in there. Um, obviously, I don't, Obviously, I don't store videos on here, so I've got companion um, organizational structures with Google Drive, with, um, I don't use Dropbox, with OneDrive, I use Notion. Um, so you work out your structure according to what you need. But on here, I work out my top level, my second level and my third levels, and then I, I go within that. So home has a folder called health. Within the folder of health, one of the folders is recipes. Once you get into recipes, then I have a note a notebook for every recipe, right? Now, I like to actually use Notion as well, but I use um, Remarkable when I want to write and draw and make quick notes about things. So that's just an example, a different example to the real estate. When you get down to your filing system, you do need to decide on your naming conventions. So, will it let me do, yes, I, I created just a... A sheet to give you an example of naming conventions. I use an example here, like when I'm naming my planners, <laughs> for every, I have to make eight different files for every type of planner because there's Sunday start, Monday start, there's the light version, there's the dark version, um, and I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, I, well, every year, of course, as well. So there's monthly, there's weekly, and there's daily. So for me, I had to come up with a naming convention that was going to work and cover on every name it was going to cover. So I came up with abbreviations. So I start with D for daily. And why is that? Oh, it's I was I was colouring in. Yep. Yep. What's Martine doing? She's colouring in. <laughs> I do like to colour in. All right. So D for daily. And then I will go with light or dark, right? So I will do, if I'm Putting them together, I will use a variation of uppercase and lowercase to help my eyes see. And then I'm and then I'll do the year, and then I will do so daily dark 23. Oh yeah, and then Sunday or Monday. That's sort of that's an that is a naming convention right there. Okay. 
you can work out your own naming conventions based on you might have properties it might be the property first and you might actually number if i had properties i would number my properties so it would be p1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 and then if a document was a prospects i would probably do a small p and then i would have some other identifier so a naming convention is important, especially when you start getting into versions of versions once you get inside of, say, the prospects folder. And so abbreviations, I've highlighted it over here, very useful. Abbreviations are great. All right, so let's go back uh, to the document drawer and let's go back to our, our client setup document. All right, so when you're filing, okay, this is the process we go through. We collect data and information always and that's why it's good to have an inbox that's why the gtd system i don't know if you have a system that you follow but i love that one get things done by david allen um, then we name so it's good to think about what naming conventions you want to use then you just make that decision and you categorize it okay and then you just move it into the spot the folder that and on the level of your folder that you've got so you got one level you go down to another level you go down to another level you know that's that's the simplicity of how it works uh, again using the real estate example i thought i would just look let's spitball a workflow for a second you get a property listed you create a folder you add some files and you think about png versus pdf especially to, to do it this is about doing it on the remarkable right it's different if you're going to be doing it on your computer but on here having an understanding of pdfs and pngs is super important i find that that is the sticky point um, and the cause of misunderstanding the most um, out of all the newbies in the space in certainly in my facebook group anyway um, so grab an understanding of that and create your folders and then have your files in there that you need from there then you go on site you grab out one of those notebooks that you've got, you make some notes, you do all that. Then that information is here in your Remarkable. So what you do need to think about is, are you sending or exporting it somewhere off site, out of this device? Think about that because then you've got, you've got all your options, right? You've got your integrations um, that Remarkable gives you and, and there are other options too, which I won't go into on this, um, video but they're not the only um, yeah there are other options let's just leave it at that um once they're filed they're available anytime all right so that's the workflow so really to sum it up i'm pretty sure this is my summary page let me just check i'm down here yes this is my summary page the last thing i really wanted to mention to you was down here but so to sum it up decide on your folder structure pick your top areas make that your first level Pick the areas, the top areas within each area, make that your second level, go down into that folder, make your third level, and then make then you're ready to put files inside of those folders. Okay, so we're going one level, two level, three level for folders, and then we're putting in files. So once you get into files, make sure you've got your naming conventions sorted, and then you organize yourself, just get them all in there. Um, and then when it comes to clients, you can think about how you're going to file. Is it by person? Depending if you're a coach, then it would probably be by could, could, it could it would put, excuse me it would be by person, but maybe it was under if you do teach courses and if you have uh, different programs that you coach people through. I would for me I would have each program as a folder, a, a top level folder, and then within that I would put the people have their own folder within that program they're doing, and then within their folder I would put. The relevant documents notes uh, teaching learning materials you know all the things that you do with coaches real estate i would have um i would go by property and then within the property i would start making notes of people uh, even lawyers i would actually um, you might have claims or categories of actual work that you're doing um, and then within those, you put the people that sort of have those sorts of cases. Um, just a suggestion. But this is the bit, just to sum up, I want to get to the don't forget. Don't forget about backup and storage. You do have the integrations. You can send and export. There are two different functions depending on what it is you want to send. Okay, don't, don't forget about backing up. 
and get some more information around that. I'm not going to go into detail on this video, but backup's really important. It doesn't end here. It ends once you get your backup sorted. Okay, so I hope that helped. Some love on the channel would be greatly appreciated. Enjoy setting up your folder structure and getting all organized. It's a good feeling. And um, I will see you on the next video. Bye.